With me right now, straight off the witness stand, is Ryan Burns, the former lover of Jody Arias, who has just come off the witness stand testifying under oath. Um, Ryan, thank you for being with us. Uh, what was it like in court in the last couple of hours sitting there with her looking at you and taking notes and you're talking about this sex encounter you had, knowing it now, in hindsight, it's just a couple of hours after she stabbed Travis Alexander to death, then she hops up on top of you. Right. I, I mean, obviously very awkward, extremely awkward. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe you're this close to something that's uh, so dramatic. Uh, I just, I really didn't think she could have possibly done. And for a month after she, uh, she was there at my house, um, she explained uh, that she was never uh, there at Travis's and, you know, that the truth would eventually come out of who really hurt him. And that, that was the whole story that she fed um, everybody until up to the point she was, she was arrested. So, Ryan, did you ask her about it? Did you ask her? Were you involved? And if so, what propelled you to do that? Uh, you know, we, we talked uh, quite a few times even after, you know, it came out. But, again, we didn't really know. She told me, she called me at 4 a.m., four or five days after she was at my house. Um, I didn't answer the phone. She called me three or four times. I actually called her in the morning and asked her if everything's okay. Normally, she didn't call me at 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, she said no. She was in tears, it sounded like, and she said that Travis had died. I said, Travis who? Uh, she said, Travis uh, Alexander. And I said, your, your ex-boyfriend, I mean, Travis just died. And she confirmed, and I, I was shocked, um, you know, because he was... You know, he was such a, a young guy, happy, everybody loved him, motivational speaker, totally turned my business around. When I was ready to quit in the beginning, first three months, he was kind of the, the guy that came into town. And I showed up to that training not even knowing if I was going to do the business anymore three months in. And um, I laughed, I cried, and, and he was an incredible speaker. He just It just, just seemed like not the type of guy that would commit a suicide or something like that. I even asked her, is he suicidal? And uh, she said, no, it, no, she didn't think he was. And I said, how did he die so young? And she said, they're looking at it like a suspicious death. And I said, like somebody killed him. And she said, yeah, that might have been what happened. I don't know yet. And so, um, you know, that's, that's how that, you know, all came out. That she and was then the she went on to say she didn't have anything to do with it. When was the last time? The last time you spoke with her, what was her story that time? Because she's changed it quite often. The entire time, um, in fact, for two or three weeks after Travis had died, I didn't think she could have possibly done it. People were saying that she, uh, you know, was gone and missing for those 24 hours, and I kind of reminded people that we didn't know when Travis died. Pe I mean, I didn't know if he died the night that she called me, the day before she called me. People were coming to the conclusion that he died four days prior, which happened to fit the story of her being missing, and I thought that was a lot to come to a conclusion because we didn't have any information. At least I didn't know of any information from the detective or anybody else. And so I didn't believe she had killed her, yeah. Well, when was the last time you actually spoke to her? Um, probably the night before she was arrested. Uh, she always seemed calm. She had never seemed like there was a problem when she was with me. Um, when the time frame came out to think that she called me, and I talked to her for maybe uh, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, when I was at the Cheesecake Factory, which was only three or four hours after he was killed, is what I'm hearing now. And so for that whole hour, we talked about simple things, giggling about um, just little jokes, just a normal conversation you would think. Obviously, very abnormal when you, in, in retrospect, but um, she was always seemed just like the Jody that I'd been talking to for five or six weeks, the entire 14 hours she was with me the day after Travis died. Okay, Ryan Burns, this is so incredible to all of us listening. And listen, you know, I, I claim to have seen it all, having prosecuted felonies for, you know, a decade. But hearing you talk about this is just riveting to me, that she's giggling like a schoolgirl and having a regular conversation with you, just a, you know, <clears throat> right after stabbing him to death.